Good morning guys and welcome to another video where I continually obsess over how good the weather is in Florida just because of the fact usually I'm on the other end of the spectrum telling you how much I hate it here. It's beautiful. Uh, I took yesterday off filming. I like bit my tongue so bad that I couldn't talk without a lisp. It's still kind of there a little bit so if I talk funny today give me a break. Yesterday I took some time and finally got the toter listed. Uh, the guys cleaned this thing out and it is the best that it has looked probably in the full three seasons of FD that we've used it. It's pretty cool. Um, I am going to miss this thing dearly. Well, since I won't be needing it for FD next year, I can't see a time or a place where we would choose to take the toter home over say like a two car enclosed trailer just because you have to travel so much slower and it's so much harder to get around if you're trying to like park at a hotel or something. The Blitz giveaway is officially over. I believe we will have a winner drawn in about two weeks. Uh, usually it just takes time for the company that handles the sweepstakes to gather up all the entries. And now we've got a work cut out for us, sending out all your guys' orders. The guys have been crushing to get you guys' orders out. I wanna give a massive thank you to all of you guys who have ordered stuff and I'm excited to hear what you guys think about everything that you got. One of the things that is key when we are doing big sweepstakes and drops is being able to get orders out quickly and ShipStation comes in key. You guys know ShipStation has been sponsoring my videos for a while and we've actually been using ShipStation for years before that. What it does is it imports all your orders from all your different sales channels, funnels them into one system that lets you compare rates from all the major shipping carriers and leverages their Fortune 500 discounts so you can get the best rates and you can use their simple software to ship stuff out faster than you'd ever imagine. You can create rules and things on the back end that make your life easier and going into the holiday season where a lot of companies that I know you guys might have or companies you work for get larger than average order volume, being able to manage those orders efficiently is key and ShipStation will make your life a lot easier. Changing your shipping solution may seem daunting before the holiday season, but I can assure you it's very easy to set up and you will be thankful that you did it. Believe it or not, 98% of companies that switch over to ShipStation keep using it forever, including us and hopefully you guys too. I want to thank ShipStation for sponsoring this video and for giving me a 60-day free trial that I'm allowed to pass on to you guys by clicking the link in the description. It is ShipStation.com slash AdamLZ and those 60 days free should be just enough for you guys to handle the holiday rush. I hope you enjoy it. Now go make ship happen. Uh, I know Mike's already been filming some with Johan over here on this SR. And I will say one of the things that I was surprised about more than anything, when you were cleaning that crank, how much debris can get stuck inside of it? Yeah, it was bad. A lot of like old oil buildup, so not necessarily a bad thing, it's just like it never got clean. One of the journals or the channels on the oil passage, it had like aluminum in it. And obviously it's kind of an obvious thing that you should take apart and clean an engine when it blows up or has some sort of catastrophic failure. But I had no idea that so much metal could get lodged inside of a tiny little hole in the crank. And that would make sense why there were some weird kind of scoring patterns on the bearings because all the was flying out of the crank. At the same time too, it's like, what happened to the engine is not even related to anything that we found when we were cleaning it. It was more like something freak happened, fell in the engine and mess it up. But let's say that would have not happen, then eventually all that metal or that aluminum that I found on the crank, it would have gone through the system and eventually like just damage the bearing. So it's kind of a good thing that that happened and forced us to take apart the engine. In a way, yeah. Otherwise, we probably would have had an issue farther down the road, so it's better now that we'll be starting fresh. the block back we were looking online for bearing clearances of the Nissan uh, FSM book so like all in clearances I measure the crank and it's over two inches and therefore every inch of the size of the journals or the crank on the mains it requires thousands of uh, oil clearances and when we use the plastic gauge we don't have the other the better tool to do this it puts us right at two thousands reading on the crank so like you put that down and then you measure each one and then it gives us the clearance so now that we got that square away we could i mean take it all out again clean all the bearings, all that stuff that has assembly loop on it. And I wanted to start fresh because I took on and off the caps multiple times to make sure that the clearances were good. Uh, and then that requires each time to 
uh, torque everything down, remove it. So if something dust or something fell on it, uh, I want it to be clean for final assembly. It's honestly great that uh, the weather's been nice out. For the past two days, we've had no internet. It came back, but it's like such a tease because we have, I think it's a, a half a megabyte per second down and like uh, maybe like a third of a megabyte per second up. So it's basically useless when we have like 20 people trying to use the same Wi-Fi. So our new office has been outside using phone with what very little cell phone service we have. So if I haven't responded to your email, please don't be mad at me. Play in the compound. We're doing the rods now, bit one and four. Uh, just to show you, this is three, I mean two and three. So this is best calls for two thousands or four thousands. Uh, and we are in the middle at three thousands. Let me just bring that over on both. This one's kind of effy because I, when I moved the rod, took the cap off, I spun it, so that's why it looks weird. So now I'll clean that off, put some assembly lube on it, put this down, spin the motor, make sure everything is happy, and uh, may look through here, make sure nothing fell in, and then we could start assembling the rest of the motor put the head on, the gasket, front cover, all that stuff on there. One of the things that always drove me nuts about this car, when you look at it from an angle, even though this wrap came out amazing and like the finish is really good on it, you see all the waves from the fiberglass panel. So Ray is gonna come by tomorrow and he's actually gonna do a little bit more intensive body work to both the rear quarters and then these doors. Um, so hopefully it won't have all the waves in them. The color that it's gonna be hopefully won't show the waves as much, but uh, it certainly will be a lot better than it was. This car for being a wrap car, kind of changed my mind about wrap cars just because it came out so good and it's lasted so long. So I'm really excited to see what the new color is gonna look like. So I've already peeled the wrap off of a couple things with this. I think I lucked out because this is actually like cheap China vinyl and it actually came off really easy on the other stuff. So hopefully that's the case with this as well. I've seen some people not have fun taking wrap off cars before. something a little bit different at Drift HQ for Black Friday. It's right around the corner and I wanted to kind of take a unique approach. So we are starting up an email account called blackfridayatdrifthq.com. What you're gonna do, you're going to send a list of all the parts you want or plan to buy on Black Friday. And what we are going to do is as soon as the clock cracks midnight, we'll have an invoice fired over to you guys with the best possible discounts. The thing is, uh, a lot of these brands don't allow us to advertise discounts prior to Black Friday, but if you know you got some stuff that you're looking at, this will lock you in, and you'll have a buy now button at 12.01 a.m., so you can have first dibs on a very limited supply, because you guys know the automotive world is crazy right now, and like, everything is out of stock. But I can assure you, 
we literally have over a million dollars of product on the shelves right now. We have been building up to this point to make sure that we'd have sufficient stock because I predict a lot of the other guys that are drop shipping a lot of stuff are going to run into issues because a lot of that stuff's going to sell out. So in addition to getting first dibs on all the deals, if you email blackfriday at drifthq.com, it's also a great place if you have questions, if you're specking out an engine build and need to know what works with what or if a certain part is compatible with your car, let's figure that out now. And then that way when Black Friday comes, we can fire you off an invoice like that and you'll be ready to go. And we're going to be doing some really good deals on turbo kit setup. So if you're buying like a turbo and fuel stuff like injectors or a turbo and a manifold, we can give you a pretty good discount. There'll be some deals with ECU master stuff, PRP, cooler works, IRP, NRG, PMC, CNC 71, destroyer die. Pretty much everything we have, we'll be able to hook you guys up with. And the bigger the list, the more we'll be able to knock off for you. So send us your list, Black Friday at drifthq.com. We'll make sure you guys can be the first to take advantage of the best deals of the year. All right, so we kind of tag team the car and got a decent amount of it unwrapped. The main part that uh, Ray's gonna block is just kind of the fenders and the fiberglass parts. But we're debating of potentially swapping my front core. I, I guess it doesn't really matter to do it before wrapping, but this is how the front end's been. When I don't have a bumper on, it's just kind of hanging free. So yeah. I have another one of these pieces we're trying to find and then I might mix and match something just to give the front end hopefully a little more rigidity. We had a uh, leftover LED kit from FD, uh, if you guys remember. There's a requirement to have underglow for the past two years, so I'm um, thinking, you know, both S15s gotta have underglow. Have some little mean green underglow on this thing, so I'm gonna pop it up real quick while this thing's on the lift, so it can be extra spicy. I feel like I recognize these cars from somewhere. Well, we've only got one minute of footage left on this camera because Mike doesn't know how to clear Shot. the card. So, Mike's gonna help me put on my brand new beautiful D-Max wing on my S15. Look at this thing, sir. Beautiful. I, uh, I found an extra trunk wing from my FD car, so that's gonna go on soon too. We just gotta have Ray paint it. For now. You don't have enough memory card space for these antics, oh. Johan. Oh. <laughs> now you put an encyclopedia on it. Yo, imagine, do you remember those? What? <laughs> remember encyclopedias? <laughs> I see what those are. Are these are the kids nowadays? No. Comment below if you've never seen an encyclopedia and you're watching my video. <laughs> For real? You, can, do you think? Nope. Parker's, they're probably, they're probably not giving them encyclopedias. That's no, like archaic. What's an encyclopedia? Might as well be a freaking abacus at this point. You ready? You happy? You excited? You know. It's one of those things. Yeah, we're going to start the car. We'll leave it at that, okay? Fuel pressure. Fuel pressure. Fuel pressure again. Fuel pressure again. Still Fuel good? Pressure still good. No leaks? No leaks. All right, sir. Cranking. We already do have oil pressure, by the way. We didn't film it, but they uh, turned the motor over before it was even in the car, so don't be like, hey, you don't have oil pressure on your first start. Be good. Ready? Ready. Like the jam. Beautiful. So we're gonna go drive it around a bit. I'm gonna try to uh, do a little bit of a bed-in procedure on the rings. What you're supposed to do is give it a bunch of like varying loads. I'm just gonna drive it on the compound for a bit, kind of bed them in, but usually they'll just end up bedding in on the dyno. Uh, plan as of right now is do that, make sure everything's good, and then throw it on the dyno tomorrow morning.
<laughs> Damn, dude, he's gonna be pissed. car works, drives, everything it needs to do, engine feels healthy. Uh, when the fender ripped off, it scratched up the door. That side of the car already needed to get fixed up because it still had the dent from Hyperfast, but now we can fix the fender too. So the plan tonight, uh, Johan is going to wire in a few additional sensors because I'm going to take the leap of faith and I'm going to throw the standalone that's in the gray car. It came with, uh, I think, an older Haltech. I'm just going to throw that set up in this and Lee said he's down to tune it. Martin's been super busy and I just want to know that the car has the perfect tune for its setup and I don't want to mess with any of the chip burner stuff and we'll be able to monitor stuff better. So plan is tomorrow or the next video that you guys will see. We'll get this thing on the dyno, give it some rips, and hopefully she'll be good. When you Still say pressure third try. Still good? Say Still good. No leaks? No leaks. No Alright sir. Cranking. Beautiful.